Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Conservative episode 193, I think. My name is Peter Feliciano. I'm your host. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you listen and, and share it and rate it and comment and all that bullshit. Find me on Instagram at Peter underscore Feliciano. Find me on uh, TikTok because <laughs> uh, I'm the only 35-year-old on TikTok uh, at Peter underscore Feliciano. And you can man, support my podcast You'd, you'd and be my so music. surprised. You are probably not, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's getting Larry. People are going to get their politics from TikTok now. <laughs> Ugh, disgusting motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you can find, uh, oh, support my podcast and music at patreon.com slash conservatish. Ladies and gentlemen, Nico House. Yay! Thank you very much. Uh, I've been pronouncing guests' names incorrectly because when you follow someone on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, it's not like they say their name a lot. So I didn't, you know, but I was like, Nico, I'm pretty sure it's Nico, right? Or is it Nico? No, it's Nico. You're, okay. it's right. You're right. It's, uh, I'm actually, I was named after the goddess Nike, believe it or nice. not. Nice. It's a male, Wait, male. That was a goddess? Person. Nike is a goddess of, the, the name means victory for the people, but she was one of the four, uh, they call them like sentinels, but like basically the four horsemen of Zeus. Whoa. Mm -hmm. But so, she was the only female. Okay. All right. This is this is interesting stuff, but obviously you learned it because you know it's your family or whatever. I learned it because it was weird. Because my name was uh, it, my name is actually the most unique in my family. I'm the only one with like a Greek name. Okay, nice. It was just, and my dad randomly chose that, uh, and it just says on the birth certificate because dad said so. So there's not really an explanation as to why. Because uh, dad said so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, now before we get into it, please plug your stuff. Uh, my Twitter is at Nico CSFB. I'll actually have it up there. My, I have Facebook too. Uh, so I post some stuff there. We definitely have a YouTube channel, uh, MCSC network with Nico house. Uh, we have, and it, Rock, my Instagram Rock. is Jimmy Hen drip as in Jimmy J I M M Y Hen H E N drip. And my name is not Jimmy. It's just a play on the name, Jimmy Hendrix and a nickname that my brother gave me ironically. So, and everybody loved it. So I kept it. So, uh, and yeah, I'm on Locals too, for those of you who may be on Locals. I think that's about it. Oh, and Rockfin, definitely on Rockfin uh, with those great people over there. Yeah, you've Nico got to, uh, it's, it's Rock Rockfin? R-O-K-F-I-N. Now, I, I started digging into that. That looks like a place, it's almost like YouTube, but you can pay people. Yeah, so it's, it's they pay in a, in a token called Ray Token. Uh, it, they have curated their people that they let in to create thus far because they didn't want people coming in and like trying to manipulate the system because it is a very, very, it's a co-op. It's a creator co-op. So you effectively own a share of the platform. However much you contribute to the platform, you own a share of that and can grow, uh, in worth. And you could choose to sell and cash out every week or not at all. And they're, they're even coming up with an investment option where we can put a certain percentage of our Ray token to the side and, and get a, uh, um, interest on it over a year. So they have a lot of different creative ways that they're making sure we're getting compensated fairly. And it's been in the beginning stages, but that's at this point, my number one source of income. And uh, my, even the people on my network, the MCSC network, everybody we've brought on since January uh, now does their show full time. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. Because of, because of Rockfin. Yeah. Especially I'm sure that what, what helped prompt that move was YouTube demonetizing you guys. How Believe it or not, it was happen? before that because I saw it coming. I <laughs> knew it was coming a year before. And I was like, this Rockfin thing seems to be working out well. The crypto market is booming right now. After, I mean, so many conversations with Martin, who's the CEO, he also founded another company called Flow Sports that like basically the reason that ESPN Plus had to get their shit together was because Flow was taking all their subscriptions. Nice. Flow Sports was, yeah. So he wanted to do something similar, but with independent journalists, because he just so happened to be a fan of like my show, Jimmy Dore. Uh, I know he was a fan of uh, Mike Cernovich and, and a few conservatives as well. And was like, wanted to create a space where we didn't feel like we had to self-censor in that telling the truth, uh, at least your truth as much as you can, will actually reward you. Um, and that's effectively what's happening. And, and you know, we're, we're blessed where, you know, the, num the number one streamer on the platform is somebody from our network, The Convo Couch. I had the most popular show for politics um, on the platform. So, it, and it's and just it's just been growing. I think I have like twenty. I have twenty one, twenty two thousand on Rockfin now. We have four, we're been stuck at forty three or forty four thousand on YouTube. Not that's not how many subscribers we get because I have that number too, which is close to like one hundred and seventy five thousand. But they hemorrhage, yes, like subscribers from us. 
And then of course they've demonetized us as well. But we knew that was coming. We anticipated it. Uh, and you know, Martin was was willing to work with us and trust me as well. And because of that, that synergy we had, it ended up, you know, Rockfin's been a huge success and it's continuing to grow. And uh, we've been able to go full time because of it without, you know, relying too much on YouTube. Right. Well, good for you guys. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I wanted I wanted specifically to have you on. Number one, Mike Harlow says hi. Uh, he's a he's a mutual Mike, friend. My yeah, he's a sweet, <laughs> he's my uh, technically my 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 uh, my wifey. Um, and because uh, you know I've been a fag hag since I was a little boy. Yeah, I grew up mm. in the Bay Area. You gotta have at least one one fag who's your best friend if you're a fag hag. So at least one. <laughs> and he's yeah. Uh, we're gonna get married next spring. Um, uh, and also we might, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I think we might start a show soon together. Um, oh, that'd uh, be interesting. I love Mike's takes, man. I love Mike's takes. He's got a lot. And the one we want to specifically focus on is sex, sex and love. And this is part of the reason why I wanted it's to important. have you on. You don't, you don't fall in line with all of the narrative, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it as a giant, big old tent. Mm -hmm. Obviously the name of my show is conservative, but I just like calling us non-liberals. <laughs> I think I can one, relate. Of things, one of the things I was talking about, and I know you, and we'll get it into maybe your definitions and, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I, I, when I first started, I was like, you know, can't I like gays and guns? Like, do I have to pick a fucking sign? Can I like <laughs> small government, but also not be, you know, uh, not want to. Anarchist. Yeah. And not be, and not want to kick a porn star out of a fucking uh, 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 turning point USA. Can we just, can we just address this? No, one tangent at a time, Peter, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but the reality is, is I, I like people who don't fall in line with the narratives and have a little oomph. Now your shirt, your chain, your, your rolls, like that's some oomph. And I like that. The fact <laughs> I that I say, it. the fact that I'm a, I'm a non-liberal, but I also say faggot and make gay jokes and all kinds of, you know, mm -hmm. and race jokes and all kinds of shit. I like and talk about eating ass on, on, on most of my shows. That's the thing. I like not fitting in fucking boxes. I don't like boxes. I never have. And so yeah. I appreciate you doing that and you being true to yourself like you were talking about earlier. Yeah, Where I would say that. Uh, go ahead. No, go, go, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, no, I've definitely been predisposed to not fitting in a box like for most of my life. I mean, I went to Korean church for 10 years. So I was like, I speak Korean, not nowhere near as fluent as I used to, but like I can read and write it. And if I like spend like a day or two in Korea, I can pick it back up pretty easily. But um, wow. uh, yeah, I also speak Portuguese, like Brazilian Portuguese. And, um, you know, I, obviously I live in Miami and uh, I'm half French, half Barbadian. Uh, and, and so that being part of like the Caribbean diaspora living in, I lived in New York and in the South mm. and, um, you have a, you get treated differently by everybody. Right. Just probably the most normal I was treated was in New York because of just, there's a lot of Caribbeans up there, exactly. but right. in the South, nobody could quite figure out what type of black I was, which was actually an issue when it came to things like making like sports teams, like the soccer team was a lot <laughs> basketball. People were like. And it was funny because I was actually like one of the best basketball players probably in my city. Like, right, right. In my city, he put, produced something like we produced Dennis Smith Jr. And like, I don't I like any of that shit. It's it's like he used to be the starting point guard for the Mavs. He's like a, a top six overall pick and all that good okay. stuff. And like, I mean, it's like we're known for like Michael Jordan's niece went to like my high school. Jay Cole was in my rival high school. Wow. Like, yeah, it, it was like, and he's a baller too. So like, we have like we're known for producing crazy athletes, and I was one of the best. Uh, Cause I was like every team I was on, I was an instant starter. Like I was an all state track, but this, it, but basketball and football, people were like, kind of like, we don't know what kind of black you are. Like you're not the dark right. kind where you're just fast as hell. You're not like clearly half black, which is like, and I am, but like, it's because we're, we're, I'm a very specific kind of Barbadian, which we're of Desi descent, uh, but specifically even like, cause we're West Indian, but specifically from Bangladesh, like wow. not from India. They right. didn't go to, to, they couldn't go to the rest of the West Indies because the Muslims from Bangladesh were being persecuted by Hindus at the time. And so they went to the one place that Hindus hadn't settled yet, which was Barbados. So Are we have saying, like super unique qualities. Yeah. Right. Are you saying that brown people have sometimes done bad things? Because this is yeah, definitely to each other. I would think I would think that <laughs> I would think that only white people are Satan. That's I think slavery no, no, started no. in 1619. <laughs> and, yeah. And anybody who's ever like had power, and then of course, when you mix in religion. Now nah, you've been on the wrong, you've been on the wrong end of the oppression stick. Like absolutely, hundred percent. 
Uh, and I, that's not like that's not ex exclusive to me because I used to be, I would say, considered religious and my, my views had to evolve because I'm still I'm still like so I believe in Jesus, but it came down to logic and reasoning at a certain point for me. But I don't believe necessarily that the Bible is the word of God. But I do know that like the, the great flood of, you know, of Noah was just the flood of Mesopotamia. So there is. You know, you don't you don't sell the Bible without tying it to some understood or well-known truths to make it more, you know, to, to make it better received to the people you're selling the religion to. So there has to be some elements of truth to it. And, and so, yeah, but but basically being outside of the box has kind of been something that I've had to, to, to deal with for my entire life. And I used to kind of go against the I try to fight against it. It used to upset me as I got older, started doing this. Uh, started seeing how people were just buttoned up and everybody kind of had this expectation of as a black man, what I'm supposed to look like and present myself if I'm going to be successful in this particular space. And I learned the more I just embrace being myself, um, regardless of what that might come out as, even as I'm discovering who I am, the yeah. better I do, the better I am in my job and the more people love it. Like that you, you build up, uh, you build up a family when you're yourself and you do what we do. Uh, if you just present somebody, you, you know, present as somebody you're not, then you're building up a fan base, but fan bases are elusive. They, the moment that you don't agree with them, you know, they mm -hmm. leave. Yeah, that's something I've thought about from the beginning of this. I think once we get sold on an artist, on an athlete, on whatever, they, we, they may come out with projects or have games or have whatever that we dislike. But ultimately, if, we, if we're sold on them, like I will always listen to whatever Trent Reznor comes out with. Like, mm -hmm. even though a lot of his shit, I'm like, eh, but I'll always give him a shot. And I'll always have, he'll always have a, a special place in my heart because I got sold on him as a person. I know that's that Kanye and Drake from table. Me. That's Drake, <laughs> Kanye and Drake for different reasons, but same right. concept. Yeah. When everybody turned on Kanye, I wasn't like, I'm like, no, this is, this is kind of what Kanye does. I mean, yeah. Cause, cause <laughs> once I know that they're going to be legit and true to themselves, I'm like, okay, I know who this is. I know mm -hmm. who this is. Once they know that I will um either sell out my beliefs or tap dance and like like me like me like me then it becomes valueless and therefore they leave easier I and think. and that's why it's hard for me to like and so i'm a, used to be a big jay-z fan hardcore knew all jay's lyrics after yeah i had to deal with the hillary shit took me cup took me two years to play a jay-z song after that shit and then he goes <laughs> back and you know in the midst of all that he him and kanye are not friends anymore uh -huh. and he tried to make kanye look crazy and then the Biden shit happens. Right. And I'm like, bro, you talk about being a realist and how educated you are and how you're so tired of white people taking advantage of black people, you know, and not giving us anything for it. And then you let you leave Ice Cube out to fucking dry effectively mm -hmm. when, you know, you know, when all that stuff went down because of your own self-interest. Right. Like you don't stand for anything. So how can I buy that anything in your lyrics were for anything but yourself? I mean, it factored, bro. I, told, I was telling people when I remember whenever Lemonade dropped. And everybody's yeah. like, oh shit, right. B and J have problems. I'm like, no, 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 they're, whatever problems they had, they're over it. But you understand, like, B is a creation of Jay Z. Like, this, this new version of Beyonce is just a creation of Jay Z's genius marketing because that's what he does. He created also the first version of Rihanna that we saw, that was Jay Z's marketing. So you take Lemonade, make it seem like there's a conflict. You have a response album, and you, and so now it's like, oh, okay. Well, they what's going on with them? Are they, uh, uh, you know, are they potentially getting divorced? And then you make a fucking album together and like, just kidding, gotcha. We just made a shitload of money off y'all and charged two thousand dollars per fucking ticket for a tour. I told motherfuckers it was gonna happen in like 2016 when Lemonade dropped because I know Jay Z that fucking well, and it's not. It wasn't because of altruistic reasons. I'm like, no, he's a fucking no matter. He's such a sociopath. He will even fake problems in his marriage for the audience right. just to sell tickets. Right. I can't get down with that. Right. Why do you like Kanye? Kanye is a, a brilliant mind, first of all. Um, you know, a lot of the things that he had said had gotten taken and purposely twisted. Like when he said he wanted to be the world's first trillionaire, nobody like talked about the fact that he said it's because he got screwed out of by Louis Vuitton out of his joggers. Like he remember he so he took the joggers to Louis Vuitton. They said they were stupid. Then they took the idea, mm. and that's why joggers became a thing. Okay. Never got he never got credit for it, and he said he went to Louis Vuitton because of what it takes to manufacture, and you know how the, the fashion industry is. And right. so 
he learned from that and said he wanted to be the rap, the rap first trillionaire because of how black people get treated in the fashion industry, the rap industry, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So he wanted to make sure everyone got a fair shake based off of their talent, not based off of connections and you know the, just the type of shit that you see in these industries. Because it shouldn't have, you know, Louis Vuitton should have never been able to take in that idea. Kanye had the, he was willing to work. He was willing to put up some of his own money. He was willing, he had the lawyers. He had, I mean, everything you could possibly need to think that you're going into, going into that with the leg up. And he still got screwed out of some of the, you know, the most popular pants of the generation right. that he created. So we now, learned from that and he grew, but right. go ahead. No, I would just, I, I, as far as, because I like throwing a little bit, of, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, whatever, into these conversations. There mm -hmm. are a lot of white people who have been screwed over the years. A lot. I, I think the name yeah. of the fucking game when you're in, in entertainment, anytime there's money, someone's going to be getting a higher cut. Someone's going to be taking advantage. That's, someone's going to be stealing. Uh, uh, that's Tesla, true. You know what I mean? Like someone. No, that's not. A, that's a hundred percent true. So there's not. So that's not. So so Kanye acknowledging the unique way black people have been screwed, and then subsequently like. It kind of they kind of get ignored because of for whatever reason. Like him addressing that doesn't minimize minimize the fact that there. I was talking about the fact I'm a big MCU fan. I'm like, so nobody's gonna address the fact that MCU has been getting screwed out of Oscars this entire time. Like, and they they just got acknowledged, just like maybe with Wandavision that just came out because of I think because of Elizabeth Olsen's role in it. I mean, it was a great show. Everybody in the world was watching it. But but so I had a theory that. Because I know how the black community is and I know how people, I mean, I live out in Miami, so I'm pretty much a damn near expert on Jewish engagement at this point. And I'm like, there is a power, there's a power structure within Hollywood and networks are networks. Like we can't pretend like Jewish people don't network with Jewish people or yeah. Latinos don't network with Latinos and Indians don't network with Indians. It's kind of like how they've grown and cultivated their communities and have become successful in whatever respective industry it is. Right. So it's like Kevin Feige isn't Jewish. None of the executive producers, actually, for any of their major movies, were Jewish. Really? And, and they were, re oh, yeah. And they're considered, for the most part, they're kind of considered Hollywood rejects. Taika, wow. who was the one who, he's the one who produced, he's a New Zealander, but he's brown. He's like an Indian New Zealander. Okay. And he's the one who produced Thor Ragnarok, um, helped, and, and that was like his first major production. And so you have a bunch, so you have Kevin Feige, the executive guy, the head guy in charge of MCU, bringing in brown people and making the most successful movies in the world women who have never even got an opportunity and work in washington and now you're seeing billion dollar films uh, by and they're undercutting the the established network to right. do it right so we're not going to reward you for that and so you put us in a position where you, we absolutely have to and right. now they've been kind of put in a position where they absolutely have to because now it's messing their money up if they don't tap into the Marvel world. This is what so. I don't understand about woke shit. Um, if money is king, because once you squeeze people in their money, as far as corporations and government, once you squeeze them in the money, that's where change happens. But the reality is, is I think going woke is not a good business decision. I mean, look at fucking Goya, look it's, at all it's these other- not. It, <laughs> it may temporarily it's not. give a boost on black Twitter, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it may temporarily give a boost, a boost among uh, white liberal women who don't know enough black people. It may. <laughs> let's be fucking real. It might give nah, a small. Mm -hmm. It might give a small. Look, Little everybody. Just... Look, look, uh, advertisers. I'm, I'm doing what you want me to do. Money, what you want please. me to do? Right. But after that, long term, how could they still make those woke decisions if it's fucking their money? Yeah. No, I, I agree, and it's. Well, so I, I would say, I know people say money is king, but one thing I've learned working in this industry, working in politics and, and uh, subsequently like just observing the way that people make their decisions. Cause I'm, I used to think that like money is the, the deciding factor, right? It's usually gonna be the first second. No, 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 now it's clout. Cause as long as you have clout, you can always make money. But with, without clout, you can lose your money and you'll never get it back, right? So clout is how Russell Brand has been able to stay alive after he came out against the industry and you know clout is why kanye can fuck up and everybody just forgives him the next day and then all of a sudden right. he goes from being in debt to being a billionaire right. right like clout is what saves careers and what allows people to be independent and independent minded ice cube would have never gotten away with what he got away with and even though they try to come at him from every angle by the end of it ice cube ended up uh shout out to ice cube him and his uh, manager actually watched my show but uh they they came out on top 
look, I mean, because we, we, and they, but the time that was given to figure out if he was right was given, it was afforded to him because of who Ice Cube is known for being, right? right? So I think that that is more important than money now. And well, go ahead. That's why LeBron, by the way, LeBron James fights so hard to, to protect his brand because it's the clout. But clout with who? This is this is. I understand that a lot of people. I think I think it's I think it's with advertisers most likely. Yeah. I think it's with advertisers most likely. I think uh, as far as Jews, I have lots of Jewish friends. I don't need to fucking justify. Uh, but let's let's. But real is real. The only motherfuckers who keep Trevor Noah in the mm -hmm. in the grand sphere, the only people who watch Daily Show are a couple mm -hmm. of motherfucking Jews in Beverly Hills and in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Liber yeah, that's I mean, it. And it, that's it. Well, it's you have to. It goes. <laughs> it really boils down to. It's like me saying when I tell, so I have to explain to East Asians sometimes because you know when the stop agent hate thing was happening, black people were a little upset, right? And my East Asian friends were like, "I don't understand it. Why?" Da, 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 da. I'm like, "No, no, no." For some reason, I don't know if y'all forgot this. Like, and I know that y'all know this because I I've known y'all for a long time. Did y'all y'all forget how much y'all parents hated me until they got to know me? Like, and I wasn't even a perceived threat to their money, hmm. or or like to them because you I mean was young Asian at the parents. time, East Asian, Korean. Chinese, right. specifically right. Korean though. Right. And they kind of forgot because of how long we've gotten to know each other and how I was able to, I won't say assimilate, but I was able to adapt and, and they got to know me and it changed their hearts and minds after a very specific interaction. And I'm not sure how they interact with other black people outside of that circumstance. So there's that. Right. So, yeah. and just historically speaking, we weren't allowed to have loans there because of redlining. We weren't allowed to have loans in our communities, but East Asians were given loans and good credit scores when they arrived here. Same with the Arab community. So if I'm having a conversation with somebody and I have to acknowledge this reality that East Asians and black people have a very tumultuous relationship because of history, that doesn't mean I hate Asian people. This is me acknowledging there is a history specifically between black and Asian people. So with Jewish people who, who Jewish people own a lot of Hollywood, they run a lot of Hollywood, this is not news to anybody. Mm -hmm. So, and because of that, they have money and then they obviously have their family and friends come and they have, they live in Hollywood and therefore they have influence that somebody like myself would not have because I did not fa they did not face the oppression um, within the last three or uh, six to seven decades that a black person would. That's why I would tell people there's a reason that you don't have a black JP Morgan. And that's a whole different thing. But there, there should have been one, but there was a specific effort to stop that from happening that did not happen in the States for Jewish people. And they were able to benefit from that. That's not attacking them. I mean, if I, anything, it's like you're lucky. Shit, must be nice. But <laughs> I will also add anybody who does start to uh, 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 speak their mind at that level, whether black mm -hmm. or white, they usually get fucked. But especially black. Tyler Perry came out last year saying, "What are you fucking talking about? Defund the police!" And on black Twitter, "Fuck that!" Blah blah blah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, uh, Ice Cube, another example, 50 Cent, another example, all these people who don't fit in the narrative and yet have a shit ton of cash. Nope, we're going to, we're going to, I kind of feel, and I don't want to get all psy up necessarily, but I kind of feel like that's liberals way of, no, 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 you don't get black people because black people are inherently poor. Black people no. are inherently incapable. Oh no, there is a, so there's a, you're talking about like the, the subtle, the psychological undertones, the, the, yes. the conditioning. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. Like I always tell people. So during the election, so I was a Tulsi Gabbard surrogate. And so I got a lot of questions because everybody was surprised to know, like at the time, she was the only candidate that supported reparations out the gate. And not only did she support her, she wanted to get it right. And a lot of people didn't know that. That's the first the, the time she contacted me was like to review her talking points. And that's why they never actually, I don't know if you noticed, but she was also the only candidate they didn't ask because they knew that she was working with me and they didn't want to do that. So she had a very unique perspective on everything. Her being Hawaiian, right, being a vet, uh, being into MMA. So she's had a whole different crowd, but also like Polynesians uh, or, or uh, um, Pacific Islanders have a very unique relationship with black people because of Samoa and then the military. And it's just like, it just, I don't know, it's a really weird relationship. So she had a very unique perspective. And I would get uh, challenged and asked about how I feel about white liberals because I would get more shit more oh, overtly racist shit from white liberals than I have ever gotten in, from conservatives in my fucking life. And I lived in North Carolina. Like, and it, it, and it wasn't, this, this wasn't subtle. This is like the worst kind of treatment, right? Mm -hmm. So conservatives, if I had a problem with them, they had a problem with me, we'll argue, right? There's an acknowledgement of each other's president, presence and brand, whatever. So which there has to be a certain level of respect between the two. Humanization. 
Exactly. I was arguing with this guy, Michael, uh, Michael Brooks, uh, on Twitter. Uh, he, he's passed now, but we had an argument uh, where he actually came at me. And then, and everybody knows, like, Nico does not run away from debates. And if you have a platform, or I have a platform. I'm not going back and forth with you on Twitter. I don't got the time for that shit. Because that's you. Because you can obfuscate, you can avoid, you can run away, you can gaslight and not be challenged right then and there. So right. before I even got a chance to say it, one of his people were like, well, Nico doesn't run away from debates. Just debate him. Uh, yeah, this is getting boring. This isn't really worth my time. <laughs> Which yeah. is what we would call liberal dog whistle. Ah. To and he knew he could get away with it, and that there's a general understanding amongst neo progressives and liberals and neoliberals, the white ones, I should say, that that's okay for him to be dismissive of a black man, even though I have a resume that far outweighs his. And, and by and by the way, as far as anybody in leftist media, to be fair, unless it's Brianna Joy Gray, like literally every, and, and that's because she had like a. Uh, uh, um, I won't say mainstream, but she was at the intercept before she started getting independent media. Like basically it's her and then me. And I would say even a little bit more me than her, just we're talking about practical politics. Mm. And um, I mean, I've been a surrogate for two presidential campaigns. I've like crafted le healthcare legislation. I've advised sitting Congress people that I'm not going to name because I'm not really happy about that shit at this point. But like it's, it's, I, I do this shit and do this right. and run a network. Right. So, you know, so it's it's not like I don't have the experience, but that experience was terrifying to white liberals. Because it goes back to what? Clout. If Nico's right about this, what if me and him disagree on an issue about black people? Or he exposes an inconsistency in my logic, in my behavior. Like that happened during the stop and first thing. Basically, I called, I was like, that's interesting how I see a lot of these white progressives taking talking points from black people uh, and black like leftists who may not have as big of brands, literally copying what they're saying on Twitter and then tweeting it out as if it, and they get patted on the back just for acknowledging some basic bullshit about like a stop and frisk policy instead of properly crediting the black person. And if you do that in Nico's case, well, Nico already has enough clout. If he keeps getting credit for being right consistently, because I'm not just going to be right on black issues. That's not the only issue I talk about. But I'm going to practice the same consistency and principles, regardless of what the issue is. And that's a problem for white liberals who build their clout off of this facade of giving a fuck. Right. But you I haven't heard anybody talk about stopping first since <laughs> Mike Bloomberg left the race, right? Right, right. I, I, I also kind of go back. Let me, let me get your ideas on this shit. Um, so a, 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 couple of, a, a couple of days ago, uh, Brandy Love got kicked out of Turning Point USA. Uh, uh, from what I, I don't know, I haven't dug in. A, some, someone said that she was taking lewd picture. I haven't fucking seen that. I think that she posted about being there. I think that she was, I'm excited to be here, blah, blah, blah. Now, I understand that they are a private company. Um, I understand. That are they, though? <laughs> I understand. We, we had some, some financial. If you want to know some financial ah! information, I'll send you some. I'll All send right, you right, some. Right. We got, you know, I got a got dedicated to exposing organizations like that. So, ah, that's yeah. fun. Um, uh, 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 if anyone wants well, to ahead. fund me, you can find me on Patreon. Ah! Um, now there, uh, uh, so she got kicked out because, by the way, because some fucking groipers. And then if you don't know who groipers are, essentially they're white supremacists. They're the people who follow Nick Fuentes and people like that. Now, mm, okay. I don't mind. Let me just throw in real quick. I don't mind. I don't think we need to deplatform, defund, blah, blah, blah. I'm not one of those people who thinks uh, this is a dangerous idea. We need to get rid of it. I, I, I subscribe to bring it into the sunlight and everybody can go, what the fuck are these people? Yeah, I'm First about? Amendment absolutist. I'm a, I'm a First Amendment absolutist. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's interesting that a bunch of people, groipers, let's be clear, people who are full on extremist of any kind mm -hmm. don't fuck. They don't fuck. Okay, they don't oh, fuck yeah. well, they don't oh. fuck often, they don't take care of themselves, they don't meditate, they don't take care of their health. Whether and they have, if she was a porn star, they would know because that's the only time they would ah, really Ah, surprise, surprise. Oh, <laughs> people have a vagina, somebody. Um, Groiper, it's interesting that now we're going to get a uh, 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 fucking, uh, <laughs> we're going to get lectured about sex from people who don't fuck. Let's, let's be absolutist. Number one, the thing I was thinking about, and I posted about it yesterday. If you think it's that Jesus would approve of you kicking out a fucking prostitute, I've got nice. some Bible verses for you. Number two, nice. if I can put up intellectually, 
free speech wise, if I can put up with you talking about conversion therapy and praying mm. for gays to change their fucking gayness, then I, then you can put up with me liking to talk about eating ass. You can put up yeah. with consenting fucking adults doing what they want to do without. Yeah, going, Republicans and their autonomy bullshit. Like it's crazy how quick that shit stops when it comes to right. uh, like homosexuality. It's like, oh damn. So now it's not my body, my choice, or it's not personal responsibility, personal autonomy, and worrying about yourself and your own family. Because like the idea that somehow being gay erodes the family environment is dumb as fuck. Because like yeah. gay men own, are the highest earning groups in the world, literally. Mm -hmm. If there's a gay couple and it's two men, they out, they out, they got more money than you. That's just how it works. And right. if we can go into reasons of that, but that kind of dissolves the idea that somehow it is, it is destroying the family environment. And so if we're gonna be consistent about personal autonomy. Then I then as a Republican, especially or or me as I'm an independent minded person, but I believe in that like I'm a my body my choice type of person, right? There's very there's very very situational instances where I'm not okay with it. But mm -hmm. for the I'm with that I'm like that with the vaccine. I'm like that with with you know people's sexual preferences. I'm like that with what they do in the bedroom or in your house. So you're not killing nobody, you're not harming nobody, no kids are involved. Have fucking fun. I don't care. It's not my right. business. Right. Like, um, but I, but again, I'm in the exact same way, but I think that I'm not, when I'm talking about that, I'm not, I'm not asking Christians to fly in the face of their morality. I'm not asking them to sign off on shit they disagree with. But if, when we get back in fucking power, <laughs> when we get back in fucking power, if you're going to try to enforce G the Jesus version of sh Sharia law, you can suck my fucking dick. I'm not yeah. down with that shit. I voted yeah, for Trump because I want your fucking beliefs out of my face. I don't yeah. want to be told I'm bad and I want more fine. Uh, like I'm not a demon. Okay. Just because I, 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 I disagree with you and it bothers me because it bothers me for many reasons, but it bothers me because we've, I thought we were on the, and I don't, I don't need to say like, Oh, uh, this side, 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 but like, I don't care that they, want to prey on people for, for stop being gay. I don't care that they believe all kinds of stuff that I don't care that they go sweet, deep, deep into fucking pizza gate shit. Okay. Rock and roll. I'll still follow you. I don't have to agree with you. Respect that you respectfully, you respectfully disagree, but you don't judge them. Yeah. But they're kicking. They literally kick somebody out because of what they mm -hmm. do for their job. Nah. Yeah. I, I agree with you hundred percent, man. It's, it's hypocritical. It hurts their movement. Right. Um, I know Mike has talked about this a lot. He's like, out of all the shit we got to worry about, y'all still worried about this dumb shit? And I would say that there's an argument that could be made that the reason that Trump brought in a lot of the LGBT community because he did not judge. And he don't, this motherfucker don't really judge anybody. Even the people that he say he does judge, I feel like that's situational and it depends mm -hmm. on him. His biggest problem, just as an aside, was he did not know how to, who to appease politically and he would fall into a lot of neocon traps that were right. set for him. Right. that caused division instead of you know creating allyship and like when he did that the korea thing that was brilliant and i gave him credit and a lot of people on the left gave him credit and enough did it though hmm. right and except for with that very specific situation he actually didn't care if enough he's like i don't care this is a good thing and whenever Kim Jong-un was like, I don't feel comfortable giving up my nuclear weapons when I know, you know, who really runs the show. Trump still lifted the sanctions because he understood that. And he knew, like, I know. We know it's not your fault, but you did your part in bridging peace between you and Moon from South Korea. And so I'm going to still do my part because that's not your fault that you still feel scared because these people literally lost their motherfucking shit whenever he helped broker peace between them. So why wouldn't he feel scared? But and he left it up to Moon and then, of course, Kim Jong-un to negotiate the nuclear weapons part. So it was like that type of shit we should be giving credit for. And Trump never gets enough credit for just being open for when he is open. He doesn't harp on certain things. There was some shit when he did harp, it hurt him. Right. I mean, I feel like that's an objective like thing. And so when you're talking about the LGBTQ community. You don't want to lose that community. Because at this point, they're just going to become disaffected and just be political refugees because they're not going to go back to the Dems because fuck them, mm -hmm. like at this point. Mm -hmm. And if you step away from that standard that has been set by Trump, which is we agree, we disagree peacefully. Uh, we don't judge, you know, unless we're judging the Democrats. That's kind of been his thing. Uh, but when you meet a Tulsi Gabbard, when you meet a Justin Amash, when you meet people who are willing to sit down and talk with you, you, you sit down and talk with them and you tr take them as they are, not as some preconceived notion of who you want them to be or you know what you've been taught they are. And that is one of the things that I definitely respect about him, 
or whenever he did executed it, you know, correctly. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed that guy when he, when he is off prompter, when he's off prompter, mm -hmm. not only is he a little more fucking spicy and you being someone who's been to New York, you understand a little fucking yeah. spice. You get it mm -hmm. when someone, he may be an asshole, but assholes do wonderful shit all the time. And I don't know anybody who doesn't judge people. I don't know anybody. So the That's idea that our politicians are supposed to be per perfect, 100%, they're never supposed to fuck any porn stars. Fuck you. Like, they're never supposed to make a hyperbolic joke. Mellow Ball gravity. was dating a fucking, there's a ba rookie basketball player dating a porn star openly. Wait, who? A, a, the Lamelo Ball, the rookie from the rookie of the year for the NBA. He was mm. dating a porn star. Like, that was like, yeah, no, she was, fi she was fine. A lot. <laughs> but nobody had a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so let's let's dig into some other stuff. You're good to go for a, a little while longer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got time. I got time. You've been talking a lot about Cuba, and I want to get into I want to get into your views on mm. what's going on in Cuba. Please give let's us talk a about uh, it. yeah. So so there's this so there's a one a lack of an understanding of the this very 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 unique and specific demographics of Cuba. Like everybody lumps Cubans into a group. And they are probably one of the few Latino groups around the world where you can't do that. The group of Cubans primarily that are occupying Miami, that run Miami, or at least the ones who are leasing Miami from Jewish people who are here before them, uh, they are gusanos or like they're white Cubans. They were beneficiaries of the Bautista regime that was before Fidel. And Bautista's regime was in the pockets of the United States. Uh, in the United States kind of took over after they came in, after everything was all said and done, pretending like they saved Cuba from the French, or excuse me, from the Span from the Spaniards. And um, they, you know, Luca Luciano was running the city and the businesses and, you know, in the most corrupt way possible. Cubans, the black Cubans and the mestizos and the indigenous were segregated. Uh, and one of the ways that Fidel got them to unite behind him was like, yo, I mean, I can't promise I'm gonna be perfect, but you at least won't be fucking segregated and we won't be under the thumb of the U.S. empire. And so they were like, you know what? That's good enough for us. And despite, you know, I'm sure Fidel's many imperfections because like every, to, to take on the empire, you can't be sane. Sorry, like there's just no way, <laughs> right? You can't, it's the US empire. But despite his imperf imperfections, when you're talking about basic equity, a lot of people think that's something to get, to get behind, especially when you see how popular leaders, leaders who stand up to the US empire are even now. And so he took his government desegregated the population all the white cubans moved here and i don't know if you're familiar with wet foot dry foot but basically cubans were the only group to get automatic citizenship all they had to do is be they just had to touch their foot onto the u.s mm -hmm. automatic citizenship until obama killed it but that was because the black cubans started coming over also the black msd so started coming over and there's like a big thing down here with the young, the newer generation of Cubans versus the ones who have been here for two or three generations, which nobody's aware of unless you're like involved in the community. Right. So uh, the embargo only came because the puppet regime of Batista got overthrown by the black and indigenous led by uh, Fidel and his crew. And Batista was a communist. He was part of the communist party. They didn't have a the the very the caricature of communism that people apply broadly, where they you take all the money from the poor and working class, it's an authoritarian regime, and you're funneling it into the elites, kind of like what we see here in the states. That was the Batista regime that was overthrown. That's why it was so easily done. Mm. But then Fidel comes in, erases that, desegregates, fights on be goes to join Nelson Mandela to end the apartheid in South Africa, takes in Black Panthers who are being uh, uh, you know, if they weren't when they weren't being assassinated, they were being uh, illegally spied on, threatened here in the states. He brought them in also, and yeah. once he desegregated and created a little more equitable system, and then got most importantly the U.S. out, which killed the U.S. sugarcane cartel. That's when the embargo happened. Okay. Now, do you feel like the shittiness of the outcome? financially, mm -hmm. whatever, of Cuba was mostly based around the embargo? Absolutely, 100%. It's, it's, okay. right, so, so let's just accept that Cuba is a government ran by humans like any other government around the world. Right. So there is at least an equal amount of corruption happening within their government. Sure. And that's something that I can accept. However, that the results of that 
are magnified when everyone is scratching and clawing to survive now, right? It's different when it's a bunch of money to go around and now I have a choice. Do I want to be corrupt? I don't got to be. I can still survive and pay my family. But if I know that, man, if I get into this position, I actually might be able to avoid this negative ram ramification of what the embargo has brought. Like that's a big issue, not necessarily in Havana, but out in the outskirts of Havana, like just the outskirts of Cuba in general, that's where it becomes more of an issue like in rural areas. And so what you, it, 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 people always associate the embargo with just some type of relationship with the US. That's not what it is. It cut off Cuba from the Western world with the exception of the UK in very specific circumstances. Uh, and they had to make a specific law to undercut the embargo. And it's even still, it's like they can get they can get fined for their for working with Cuba. Hmm. The the uh, they cut them off, and then they have a blockade as well to confiscate any help or assistance to Cuba. And then like so, Cuba was using interferon alpha two B to treat COVID. It was working. The numbers were crazy low. They were trying to get this medicine out. They got it to some like Venezuela and a couple of other places. They were trying to give it to the rest of the world because they were actually not worried about the financial incentive because Cuba has one of the best medical. Uh, infrastructures in the world as far as like just be, their ability to produce on point medicine they bro, they took the cure for cancer and put it in an inhaler i don't know if you know that but like that's what it's literally available just mm. go get it at your hospital it's there you can just pick mm. it up you're good and mm. so they tried to make interferon alpha 2b uh publicly available around the world they were just giving it to people bro they the u.s stopped it you didn't even hear that. I'm sure you didn't even hear about it. That's what they use a lot I of time. I heard you at. post about it, but yeah. yeah, they in Africa they use that a lot. Obviously, in addition to hydroxychloroquine and zinc, but basically those are the two main options. Because what COVID does is it re reduces your interferon, like your naturally produced interferon, and that's how the virus takes hold. Interferon alpha two B ensures that that can't happen. So okay. they did a great job trying to save lives while America was trying to lie about hydroxychloroquine and zinc, right? Just because Trump said something about well, that wasn't the only reason, but they were able to weaponize that. Right. And then they had to retract all that shit quietly, even though they were allowed about demonizing it. Right. And then same thing with ivermectin. And so you're talking about a country that literally just they talk. They were saying a genocide is happening in Cuba. That's that just is a sim simply a lie. And it's like, do, do does America have the room to talk? Right. Because uh, what we, we witnessed, right. what we witnessed, y'all like literally let people die to, to deny the medication that was readily available in the states right. because you were trying to push this vaccine that you gave pharma pharmaceutical companies thirty two billion to produce now now okay now when you're talking about does america your version or your definition of about the government that right in that context means the government in power i yes. specifically i would say you would uh, more you would go the people the swamp if you will the people who yes in yes yes, yes. Okay. absolutely now <laughs> as far as why they're in the streets in cuba why so there, there was a couple of hundred people there protesting the government. There were actually hundreds of thousands of people there prote like protesting in favor of the government. And there was someone, the UN tried to use this, this black woman, uh, her picture to denounce the government and what its treatment, which that there was nothing happening. That, that, that's not even, that's like not a thing. And nobody's ever provided, nobody's even provided any proof that this was happening. Wait, but there who, was, who, was, who was using it? The, the United Nations official Twitter okay. account use okay. someone's picture. And so when the woman comes up, it's like, I denounce you using my pictures, my pictures to push this bullshit narrative. I'm protesting in favor of the government and against the embargo. And instead of just, you know, they could have the honest thing to do would be, oh, our bad. We'll put up, a, you know, a picture and confirm it, make sure that they're part of the protest that we're talking about. No, they didn't do that. They blocked her. They just suspended her Twitter account. Twitter suspended her account as a response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mainstream media was putting up pictures of Argentina's uh, celebration after they won the Euro Cup and saying that, that those are the protests in Cuba. So you're saying it, we're, we're obviously no one on the right, no one on the right really believes. I mean, there's a couple of motherfuckers, but really like trusts government in general. Right. I mean, that's exactly. the main push. So you're saying that in general, we're being lied to now about Cuba. Exactly. Right. Because it's really convenient it's really convenient that Cuba is developing, they've developed their own vaccine that they are trying to ship out. And obviously that there would be money to be made off of that. And then like, there's a hundred percent chance that it's better than 
the U.S.'s vaccines because there was no financial incentive. And they have been working on COVID. Even though they still have Buicks? <laughs> I mean, well, you, well, how are they going to get new cars if you have an embargo? You literally can't I, get them I, there. You get what but, I'm saying? But why, wouldn't, but why wouldn't they have the materials to create new shit? Why would they well, have the materials no, 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 to create so a good, there's, a good there's vaccine? There's patent issues. Oh, no, no. Okay. They have the medical. Yeah, so that, that's like there is there their island is so big and you can use a lot of naturally produced because it's still like cuba it's like a, it's massive like people have no mm -hmm. idea how big it is mm -hmm. so you still have the natural solutions that make you okay and plus you can still trade with other countries like venezuela but then venezuela is also cut off from you know weird shit like car companies and and things like that iphone like it's hard for them to get an iphone there et cetera, et cetera. and they're under the same circumstances where we what we do is effectively try to choke countries out via sanctions and then we blame the leader, right? And it people get so pissed off. There's prop we, you know, the State Department feeds people propaganda, and then some at least a quarter or a third of the population enough think that you have to overthrow that regime. And that's the problem, or that government, because the government has to be the problem. It can't be the United States. But anytime the United States hyper focuses on anybody, it's never been for altruistic reasons, ever. Literally, they were like, man, that guy Osama, we gotta go get him. So let's go fuck up, you know, a hundred, couple hundred thousand Af Afghanis and then go fuck up some, you know, millions of Iraqis. And oh shit, you say he's in Pakistan? Our bad, our bad, that's our bad, y'all. Like, bro, no, y'all just killed like millions of people to go get this guy who he's from, he was from Saudi, like he's Saudi Arabian royalty. Like that's who Osama was. And he although, found- although Although I will throw in, they did kill a lot of horrible people in the Taliban. Taliban, Taliban. But was it worth the hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of people that got? And we put the Taliban. The Taliban was in power because we put them there. So there's that. There's that whole thing. Like that, they were the ones who we, we got. Sold them to, guns. We sold them guns. We trained our special forces. Trained them. That's how they maintained the power in Afghanistan to begin with. Right. Right. So there was always a threat of we know that the United States is backing the Taliban. Therefore, no other group could come in. And take them out but it, it, even still osama wasn't part of the taliban osama was part of al-qaeda so if we were in afghanistan taking on the taliban that had nothing to do with what we were said we were there for so that's right. a whole different issue and right. so y'all killed thousands millions of people to innocent people because of a guy who was from saudi arabia which we knew who was found in pakistan and that doesn't like bother people and, and more so, does, and, and because of that, I feel like that's why a lot of us have the distrust of the government that we have, no matter what side of the aisle that you're right. on. So now it's like, oh, because of this way, this conversation that we've been conditioned to have about Cuba, now it's like, oh, the switch is off or switch back on. I have to react. Emotion, 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 emotion. And I'm sure because of, you know, given your, your disposition, I would imagine you hate that type of shit too when people emotionally react to things mm -hmm. instead of being logically and ethically consistent with who they claim to be, which kind of goes back to the issue that you were talking about with, with the LGBTQ community. Like, why are y'all so fucking worried about it? If y'all preach bodily autonomy, why does that stop with my goddamn bedroom, my body? Right. So it's the same thing I feel about Cuba. We can't say we don't trust our government. And then Marco Rubio comes out and is backing this shit. Joe Biden is basically saying the same thing, right? Then you have uh, uh, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News, all agreeing at once. And then the mayor of Miami comes out and says that we should bomb Cuba. That's his people, supposedly. That's his country that they're trying to save and they want to free those people. But you, he, I won't say it was a 40 and slip because they've had him on Fox News twice since he said that. It wasn't a 40 and slip. This is called manufacturing consent. And he was very right. clear in case you were wondering if he meant like, like, oh, we're going to bomb like a military. No, no, no. He said like Kosovo. Right. We fucked up the people we were trying to save in Kosovo by right. bombing that country. Because it was never about those people. Just okay. like we left Libya after Gaddafi was out. We said it was for humanitarian efforts, right? So why right. is there open market slavery and we're not doing anything about it? We're right. not talking about it. There's nobody reporting it. Right. Because now, Gaddafi was uh, assassinated, there's open market slavery in Libya right now. Right. So it sounds like someone in, in your position, you feel like across the board, there's going to be the same amount of government. Uh, 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 corruption. Like a corruption. Level of corruption, yeah. But... There's a higher, not a higher percentage, maybe, but a higher uh, 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 consequence because we are the main power. In the and world. more of an incentive when you are on the other side, like the, the government getting beat down to become corrupt. More incentive. What do you mean? 
because you're you know that there's very limited opportunity in your country because of the embargo or the sanctions or whatever mm -hmm. right so now it's like if the only way to have any semblance of power or influence is through the government, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get there. And I may take advantage of that. And you're easily, and you can eat, you can be Juan guaido right? We can be bought off even by the US. You, you become a little bit more accessible and amenable to the US and their interests just to survive. That's kind of what the, the United States does in the States, right? They individualize us. They make us not think about our brothers and sisters next to the right and the left of us. It becomes about how do I take care of me and mine, even if that means throwing somebody else under the bus. But, and by the way, full disclosure, I'm actually not a socialist or a communist. Right. I believe in mixed economies. And people right. think that I'm a communist and I'm or a socialist, I'm really not. I don't right. believe any system where they think a pure ideology will be the solution to any of these problems. I'm like, no, every situation in every country is different. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I just acknowledge I'm, the facts as they are, not as I want them to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Like I, I, I just because I, I voted Trump doesn't mean I don't want any liberals that there will be some idyllic utopia someday where we just have everybody. No, but but I will say we have been getting fucking better in every aspect of life. I'm going to say it. I know you may mm -hmm. disagree, but I, I think in every fucking aspect of life, we're getting better and better and better. The number of, as an example, uh, 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 people, unarmed people who are getting killed by police goes down every single fucking year. Crime has dropped mm -hmm. since 1991, 70 fucking percent. Violent we're crime getting, dropped. Right. We're getting fucking better. But we, um, and that's, and I think that's because of people, not because of politicians. Absolutely. Totally mm -hmm. agree. Now, so it sounds like uh, here's another question to the Cuba thing. Why then, in your, in your view, has the government there turned off uh, internet? Uh, well, one, I think it's because the, cause the CIA has plants there. Right. So we have to remember, this is the same CIA that was like, let me, we're going to bomb Miami to try and have an excuse to, to invade Cuba with operation Northwood. Luckily, JFK was a good man. He killed that shit immediately, but it's like literally just Google operation Northwood. It's right there for everybody to read. They were going to bomb Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. the Bay of pigs was done behind JFK's back. They tried to assassinate Fidel over 600 times. Like, they have plants in Cuba and they have been using those plants as they've done in most states or most countries in the same circumstances to provide, you know, cover for the imperialist lies. I mean, I just I hate to put it like that. And also, I do believe that there is there's a there's a financial strain right now because of the tourism was how they were getting their economy back. COVID killed that, obviously. So there is financial there is financial implications that have to be considered that could be stressing people out. But more people, a little bit more nuanced. They have their issues with the government, but they have not separated that from the embargo. And what we have seen lately is all of a sudden, because people are waking up to just how much the embargo damage, um, or excuse me, the embargo has damaged their economy and muddied the waters there, all of a sudden there's this hard pushback of the embargo doesn't do that much. Then why the fuck is the embargo there? Please explain this to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it doesn't right. do that much, why is it so important to there? Why, why don't we lift it? So now we can have a conversation, a truly philosophical and objective conversation about whether or not communism or socialism worked in that circumstance and whether or not the government is or is not more corrupt than others in that circumstance without the embargo muddying the waters of this conversation or debate. How often do you find, because I, 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 I'm a, a, a thorough capitalist as well, but obviously I, I believe in mixed economies as well. I don't think mm -hmm. that, I don't think that, although, uh, you know, Yaron Brooks? Mm, maybe. I don't, I'm, not, uh, I'm bad. He's an economist. He's got a, a weird uh, 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 voice. He's like, it's almost like Barbara Walters. Like, oh, you, you do the, the iPhone. The, economists tend like to a, have weird voices, but. Yeah. yeah, dude, they're weird motherfuckers. Um. But like, uh, so Yaron Brooks talks about okay, capitalist capitalism can be can be uh, um, uh, uh, what's that fucking word? God damn it! Um, can, well, no, uh, we were just talking about it in the context of the government. Um, Imperialist, cronies? Uh, no, some with a C. Um, negative or positive? Negative. Uh, it can be. You got it. I know you got it. Uh, can be. Con, com, com, uh, compromised corrupted. or corrupted. Thank you. Corrupted. There you go. Yeah. That's what I say. Corrupted. Yeah. Wow. All right. Um, <laughs> well, the easiest ones are the hardest ones to remember. I know. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, capitalism can be corrupted and be, have lots of negative 
right? But he believes if, if we had full on motherfucking capitalism, that would actually give people the opportunity to kill through their choice of where to put their money. That would be give the opportunity for corrupt companies to die that way. Now, yeah. I don't believe that there should be no social net safety net at all. I mm -hmm. think that there definitely should be. We all need help sometimes. And, we've, and I've certainly been a benefactor of that um, or a be, uh, benefited from it. Um, but, but where do you, when you get into that mode, cause you said you're not a full on socialist, you're not a full on uh, communist. When you see people muddying the waters of, of the nuance of, mm -hmm. of the reason of the stuff you talk about from your own side, how do you wrangle those motherfuckers from my own side? So a lot of people who are actually like, oh, embargo, exactly. also believe we should we should we should uh, 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 separate white people and, <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah, kill they're, white they're, kids. And, you know, so do you, I get I get what you're saying. Like you're saying that there's like people who will claim that they're, you know, against the embargo. And it's, honestly, they end up getting to and I've seen it on social media. They get into capitalism versus communism conversations. Right. See, what a lot of people don't know about like socialism, for example, they don't actually study theory they just study the theory as they want it to be not what it is you can't actually have socialism without capitalism capitalism or excuse me socialism is supposed to take the waste of capitalism and make sure that the people who are left behind by it because that's like a natural naturally occurring thing um just by its nature they get taken care of by a social safety net in a way that does not necessarily stop capitalists from profiting in a free market but it doesn't because you're effectively, if you let people fall by the wayside, you're fucking, you're kind of hurting capitalism because mm -hmm. they, they don't know, they, 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 don't know, they no longer have spending power, which right. means they can no longer save up money, which means they can no longer be part of the competition aspect of right. making you have to buy for their, for their um, consumerism. So right. that is like, so you can't take out capitalism if you want to have socialism. That's just a, a fact. Right. Uh, and that's why Cuba, as socialist as it is, they had tourists coming into their country. Right. They still had interacted with 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 other countries and they became right. more open business wise because there is an element of true free market capitalism that is useful and necessary for socialism to thrive. Right. But like what we're seeing, in my opinion, in the States is like the caricature of communism that also no one actually wants to acknowledge because if nobody wants to associate communism, the, the left. Right. They don't want to associate communism with the U.S. Because then, but, but that's actually capitalism. Like what I'm trying to teach people is like, like these words don't really mean shit, bro. Like co China calls themselves a communist country, and the motherfuckers is by is ca more capitalist than the U.S. Sometimes yeah. they like, hey, bro, y'all want to bring y'all bullshit to our country and have no regulations? Come Although, on over. I'll, maybe financially, but they do like no, to fuck their people. They love to fuck their people. No, they do. I, but like, yeah. how would that make them any different than our politicians? Like, we don't even have we don't have two parties. Uh, well, uh, we, we don't, don't have harvest, two parties. We don't harvest organs. I'll say. Uh, <laughs> we hey, we we hope that that doesn't happen. <laughs> I can tell you from firsthand experience, a friend of mine who's a lawyer was actually in a lawsuit against the Mayo Clinic. And basically, they got there was a situation where somebody Planned got skipped Parenthood. on the list. They got skipped on the list and they were like, and they died. The person died because they got skipped on the list. Mm -hmm. And it was a politician who ended up getting the organ. Mm -hmm. And it was, and they started obviously doing the backtracking where the organ came from, et cetera, et cetera, why that person got skipped. And then two judges removed themselves from the case. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where one judge just gave a like a, a, a summary judgment, which is like basically nothing. Like it's it's not dismissing it, but it's I don't know, kind of putting it in an eternal limbo to a certain degree. And nothing got done. And I, and the theory is because it's a Mayo Clinic, this is in Florida. This is like a, as a federal case. It got to become a federal case. And the Mayo Clinic is directly tied with the Clinton Global Initiative, specifically in Haiti. So it's like I'm hoping. That there isn't an organ harvesting, organ harvesting situation, but like, is it that they're more open, or we we harp on it because like we talk about citizenship in China, which is horrible. How I mean, look at what we're doing. It's like we're fucking imitating their tactics, bro. Mm. That's what our government is right now, mm. um, and every like what we're doing in the global South, Central South America, Caribbean, China's doing right now in in Africa. Nobody knows. Mm. What do you mean? They're they're. Tying, they're taking the austerity that has been implemented on African countries, um, you know, mostly through Western imperialism, and they're taking advantage of them and then basically wrapping their like economies up in their 
in their economy and taking over their resources the same way we do with a lot of countries in Central and South America. So it seems like it's, it's like in some ways it's bilateral and it seems mutually beneficial, but China always gets the best end of the of the, you know, the deal every single time. And, plus, and they have ways to kind of force it on you if you don't play ball. Right. And plus Patrice O'Neill, you know, Patrice O'Neill, the, the, the comedian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite comedian of all time. He used to talk mm -hmm. about, uh, he used to go on rants about Chinese people and Asian people are hilarious. Um, and, uh, and one of the things he talked about is in conversations with, uh, with mainlander Chinese, he, it came out, uh, 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 that Chinese people almost, uh, as far as mainland, almost see black people as ghosts. They yes. think they're like some sort of lucky or unlucky being. Mm -hmm. That's because they didn't have them motherfuckers for a long, long Literally time. Literally did not before. see us. Yeah. Yeah. They did not see people. And in, in Chinese culture, the darker your skin, the, the lower your class. That's why they mm -hmm. wear visors, right? All that, all that stuff. Um, oh, you good to go a, a few more minutes? Yeah, I, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what, what I, what I meant by that earlier question was, Obviously, you seem to be somebody who does his research. You do, you seem to be somebody who, who who digs into these topics, and you don't dig on identity politics and and stuffiness and all that shit. And I appreciate that. <laughs> Where along the line, how do you mentally deal mm. with people who, on the left, on the left specifically? Mm -hmm who are like, yeah, embargo. Anyway, here's, here, let's, let's cut off kids' dicks. Like, how do you, how do you mentally deal with being like, whoa, 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 but I, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh, man, that is, uh, believe it or not, bro, that's, uh, that's something that me and Don Julio have to talk about almost every day. And <laughs> Don Julio, by the way, is my favorite tequila for anybody else. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I, I'm in that Don I Julio. I the characters yeah, on your show. <laughs> <laughs> nah, me and me and Don Holy will be having conversation. But nah, it's um like it's hard being a nuanced person because I consider myself independent. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that leftist immediately say that I'm a, there's some people who call me a neo-Nazi just for being friends with Jack Pazovic, right? Uh and it's and it's it's frustrating because they will say that they're on my team, right? Why don't you go on these shows? Well, they're all they're intimidated by me, and also they're like low-key racist, so like they don't want me on their shows. Mm -hmm. So like and and by the way, I go on anybody's show if they want to have an honest conversation, right. uh, and even if they want to debate me. So that's never been an issue. But right. like, if when I become friends with Jack, um, oh wow, you're friends with a conservative, and I'm like, well, I, I know this is kind of crazy for my generation because they might not re remember this, but like back in the day, almost everybody who got married and and had friends, they they didn't agree with each other on politics, and they could still be friends. Because you can't change anyone's hearts and minds if we disagree on things completely. And we every time we talk about politics and it's just trying to get us to seize at this point, then that's an agenda. I don't have any reason to believe that you're just trying to do anything but convert me to your side. We're right. friends. Now when we're having a conversation that may have been controversial, it may be controversial. You're not judging whether or not you're not looking at it from a perspective of me trying to convert you. You're like, well, he's been honest. He's and, you know, we've established a baseline knowledge of 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 the issues that you trust them, you trust me with and vice versa. And, a, and there's a level of just trust that's there. And, right. and that is the point where we start building bridges and, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I can see things from that perspective now. Maybe I can. And, and then there becomes a level of accountability now because so when me and like me and Jack were like the headliners at this better discourse conference, mm -hmm. I was the second to last uh, on the second to last panel. And he was on the last panel. And, by the end of both of our panels, for the most part, like you had one guy call like he's like, are you like Milton Friedman reincarnated because of like my economic stances that I felt are pretty leftist. But he's like, that's really common sense. So and some people, for good reason, don't associate common sense with leftist economic policies because of the way it's presented a lot of the times. Um, and then Jack sounded like even though he's on a panel with two conservatives and a progressive, the progressive was clapping for Jack for most of the panel. And he thought that he wouldn't agree with Jack at all. Mm -hmm. Because Jack is like somebody tried to obfuscate and 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 say you know try to make it Dems versus Republicans like the fake ass you know uh, dichotomy that doesn't really exist. He's like, okay, can we stop pretending as if there is like two different parties and stop like relying on these talking points? And he's like, bro, if we don't figure this out and work together and realize who the fuck our enemies are and 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 also be willing to work with other people and be honest while we're doing it, we're never gonna get shit done. Like, stop pretending like the CIA is actually a good organization in any capacity because Jack is very open about his disdain for the intelligence community. Like, and he's like going in 
And my fucking team, like one of my colleagues, she's a leftist, hardcore, comes down and is like, Nico, I got to gotta apologize to you. I was like, wow, what's up? She was like, you were right about Jack. And I could tell that y'all's friendship had a significant impact on how he's evolved and in my ability to communicate with conservatives who may have otherwise not listened to me. Because now I understand where the disagreements are. I'm like, oh, a lot of times the disagreements are just misunderstandings. Right. And a fear of this person being dishonest and relying on talking points. And a desire to not listen. Which and is a, what? Normal, it, a desire to not listen. It's a normal yes. human thing. It's a normal human thing, especially when I've got my cockles up and I'm ready to def defend myself. I'm listening for a buzzword. Give me buzzword, exactly. give me buzzword and boom. Then I come yeah. back with a talking point. The reality is the majority of the people in my life, I know a lot of white liberal. How, how could I? <laughs> I almost exclusively fuck white liberal girls. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I, I, am I supposed to only, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not going to lie. I would literally avoid. Uh, I, I've ran away from liberal <laughs> women. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, well, my, uh, my, my dick is very powerful. It has, it, it changes minds. That's what it, 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 it can. But the thing is like, for me, if we, if I'm fucking with a, like a liberal, a, like a neoliberal, for, for example, I got to go through every conversation knowing that, yeah, you're saying this shit, but you're probably full of shit and you don't really have any conviction to make sure. Like if the, if the opportunity came, you would just vote for a segregationist. Right. Mm -hmm. No matter what you say about how much you support black lives and how mm -hmm. much you want to defund the police and all that bullshit, anti-war, anti, -war, anti you're social gonna vote justice for warrior. Yeah, I didn't say social social justice warrior, but I I've spent the majority of my life in the Bay Area and in New York. I don't have a choice. Yeah, you know, yeah it's yeah, not like I've got some good old good old girl, some Kentucky prom. You know what I mean? Haven't had <laughs> you know gets married at sixteen. Like I don't have that option around me. Um, but I mean, like girls who are who are reasonable, but just go into the booth and go. Well, I remember someone saying that Trump is racist, so I guess I'll vote Biden. I can deal uh, with that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. I become a safe place. Aloof. I have a I have a former lover of mine uh, who's a, a a teacher, and and she came. She 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 was the type of person like I become the type of person like, hey, uh, can I know I can talk to you about like I kind of disagree with this leftist thing, and I'm like, yes, come, yes, you, yeah. I am a safe place. <laughs> That, you know, it's funny. So me and the girl I'm talking to right now, <clears throat> she's, uh, I would say she's more liberal than anything, <clears throat> but she's um, Arabic also. So she has like a conservative thing going on too uh, when it comes to economics. But um, she's very, very, she's very, very much so against this, the specter of communism. And like, so she'll have honest conversations with me because she knows I hate whenever like these white boys who studied fucking Marx for two days and think they understand what communism is or what capitalism is for that matter. Um, and, or, or understand it in the grander scheme of international politics. Like she knows I hate that shit too. And they'll try to lecture her in a way that she's not receptive to. Cause she's like, you're just regurgitating talking points. Right. But we'll disagree on the issue of Cuba because she is so kind of like petrified because of her mom's experience at the idea of capitalism right. that I actually get to, I, I can be understanding with her because I'm like, I know that you're honest and, and, and consistent on all these other issues. So if there is something here that is particularly triggering, it's like I always say, when you know better, you have the responsibility to do better and be more understanding. But that's only because we've established a baseline of honesty and openness where we don't judge each other off of our political beliefs. Right. And that's the most. And that's not what I would describe a neoliberal as. They're judging you the moment you disagree with them, not because you're wrong. Right, not because the facts agree with them, but because you disagree with them, because it all goes back to what we were talking about, which is clout. Right, right. Fucking a man. Yeah, yeah. This has been a great conversation. Thanks for coming on the show. I oh, appreciate really that. Good. I have people in my life who, uh, who same thing. Where I have, I have people I adore. Who I, if my ass was falling off, I'd call them and I'd be like, "What do I do with this meditation? How do I take care of myself? What do uh, <laughs> let's talk about girls and music and comedy, the important shit." Um, and then, and then, but there are people who, who I don't, I don't ever want to broach the subject of politics because eh, I've seen your Facebook posts. I'm good. And they've seen mine. They're and good. They, and and y'all kind of know, like, this is just, we're not going to, we're not going to talk about this. Yeah. Right. But you know, like I said, some things are beyond politics. My grandfather passed, passed away. Uh, and it was a very, very specific kind of fucked up situation. Cause like it was 36 hours after he took the Moderna vaccine. Hmm. Right. Um, so outside of my team, 
Jack was one, and I also have a pretty popular follow. I have like 50,000 Twitter followers and a pretty, you know, I'm pretty well known. I'm on RT a lot. And so a lot of people know me. A lot of people use me to come on their show now. And so people knew what was going on. Jack was one of three people to actually check up on me hmm. when, when my grandfather died. Now, a lot of people call me their friend, you know, and I've treated people accordingly. But whenever something like that happens, and it's like, oh, the evil Republican guy is the one who calls me or, or texts me. And, 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 the one, and two out of the three, by the way, we're both conservatives. Mm -hmm. That's that's the other thing that was kind of like, OK, I mean, and one dude just had a newborn daughter. The man was calling me every two, three days to right. make sure I was good for, for two, three months straight. Right. And he's uh, I mean, he's a pretty high ranking guy, like within the, the music industry, like working for a major, major record label. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet newborn dealing with th a lot of the stuff that comes with that. And he still finds time to call me. And I'm like, man, these people that are my friends that ag agree with me. Right. Don't even find. So it just kind of like gives you when you when you deal with weird stuff like that. I don't there's nothing that happens in my life where I don't reflect on it. And that was a very, very that moment gave me a lot of perspective of like the politics. Like for me, the politics was what was never that was never the important thing. The clout was never the important thing. It was, I got into, I do what I do because I understand people mm -hmm. and I want other people to understand people. Mm -hmm. And I want us to, we don't have to agree, but I also want us to understand that we're not, we're not each other's enemies. Right. And it, it takes creating relationships and maybe surprising places for us to get there. And when I, after all the shit I took for being friends with Jack, Okay, and we both have taken shit, both of us. Right. For him to be the one that calls me, also, like I said, outside of my team, for him to be the one that checks in on me, for my other friend Fatty to be the other, like, be the one that checks in on me, the conservatives who are, they're walking their walk because they're both Christians, right? They're walking their faith. And I may not be religious, but okay, now I know that our disagreements are honest disagreements now. Now I under, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not just a person. I, exactly. And we can have conversations and, and, and have me and Jack have conversations about our personal growth and evolution all the time without judgment. I remember I told him Antifa, I believe that Antifa and Proud Boys were from the same people. <laughs> I told him this, right? And he was kind of like, what? Are you, what? Cause you know, he's kind of like, was in the camp of it's just Antifa, that's the problem. I'm like, bro, you gotta trust me here. And you know, I'm gonna provide my logic. And basically I did the show to him the, the money line and the timing, cause I'm giving him the perspective of an activist who's been in the black community dealing with this stuff and being in protests and organizing. I'm like, bro, Antifa was nowhere to be motherfucking found in Ferguson. And I was at Standing Rock, there were nowhere to be found there. It's weird how they came here to fight fascists. I said, I can guarantee you this, bro. They're going to be gone when Biden wins. And he was like, no, I don't think so. I'm like, bro, trust me. And I was like, and I'm sure Tario's a fed. And he was like, bro, are you sure? I'm like, bro, I'm from the hood. I'm goddamn, that's the thing I'm most positive. I'm more positive that Tario is a fed than Hillary would lose in any election against anybody. Like, that's how sure I am. And guess what? He gets arrested two days before the January 6th incident with two magazines. They pretended like they didn't even know he was being, that he had been arrested, right? Because they, what they do, they pretend like, we were just so caught off guard by all of this. Except for they knew he, because he got there early to be arrested on purpose, so he could be immediately removed. But they still needed his name to promote, so that his some of his people would come, and they could just focus on the five proud boys that were there. So then it comes out after the court documents get revealed, and he has his little arraignment. They're like, "Hey, can we give him special exception? Because you know, he's an informer for the FBI." Mm. And he was like, "Fuck, bro, you were fucking right." I'm like, "It's because I'm I try to be objective." When Jack says what he had to say about Antifa, I didn't summarily dismiss him because he didn't say something about the Proud Boys. I'm like, well, let me hear what he has to say. Because just because he may not see the Proud Boys like I see them doesn't mean that all of his opinions about Antifa are wrong. Right. And the reality is just like grunge, <laughs> anything that, get, that gets popular or power is going to be corrupted. I had a, I had a Proud Boy on back in uh, 2018. Mexican, full on fucking puro fucking la raza. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and yet white liberals were like, I have to unfriend you because you're having a white supremacist. I'm like, you fucking cocksucker. No, yeah. Anyway, um, so anyway, um, 
I'll, I'll just buttonhole it with this and, and end it with this. The reason why I'm able to have a conversation with people I disagree with, the reason why you're able to have friendships with people you disagree with, the reason why we're able to do this is because, and I'm going to say it hyperbolically real quick, and then I'll explain, because we fuck. Now, what is fucking when it's I talk about that? When I talk about that, it is self motherfucking care. Okay. It is yes. honest communication. It is here's what I need. All right, universe, I'm opening myself up for what I need. I want to take care of myself. I shower, I brush my teeth, I go to the dentist, I get money. I take motherfucking care of myself. I'm not a goddamn extremist because I take care of myself. And you were talking about on a post maybe two, three weeks ago, maybe more about mental health. Yes. And there what, is mental health month. Yeah. 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 And, and what, what has been your experience besides the, you know, I'm sure Don Julio in your own way, what has yeah. been your experience with Miami, so. taking, taking care of yourself throughout all this? No. So, so that's, it's funny that you say that because I literally was talking to my friend the other day. Like, I said, bro, you know, there's like dudes who are out there who can't have sex whenever they want. I was like, could you imagine? I was like, that would drive me fucking crazy. I would probably start wars and, and shoot people in schools and do all that crazy. I'm like, bro, I get mad. Like if, if my girl is in the same house as me and I go three or four days without getting head, I'm going through this bitch like a tornado. Right. But for three or four days without getting head, imagine right. not having sex like when you want to. Like even once a month, I'm sure is more than more than enough to host people. I said like, people go years without having consensual right. sex. Talking about like the sex that you don't, and I don't, I don't have a problem with prostitution. Please, we need prostitutes. They can literally save our fucking society if y'all would right. just let them do their job right. and let these motherfuckers get their nut off. For the love right. of God, for real, right. and it's and it's it's funny because when I th when we really, I mean, I I'm not I'm objectively speaking, I would like to consider myself conventionally good looking, right? Jack <laughs> is definitely a good looking guy too, right? But people <laughs> on my network are also generally good looking people. Sure. Like they, we get like a people always tell like me and th this other girl Fiorella who's on my network, they're like, yo man, not like that we should start our OnlyFans together, but like we should start our own, own OnlyFans pages. Like they joke about it, but they're right. being dead ass serious, right? And, and it's like, I'm 32 years old. I'm not naive to how my body looks at this point. I work very hard to keep it that way. And I was an athlete. Right. Like there are certain things that will trigger, like you said, that will trigger other people because they look at you and they know this motherfucker is having the time of his life, having sex consensually on a regular basis. I'll show him like, and they have problems. They become extremists. They and when it. And when I've been in that mode, because I think all men, maybe apparently you've never gone through a dry streak. Good for you. Uh, but Three I've, months. <laughs> Three months is my longest. Get the fuck. All right. I'm going to keep that. I'm so serious. Um, and I thought that was a problem, bro. I'm telling you. Um, now, I've had dry streaks. And when I have, when I have, especially when I was younger, it was because I didn't believe in myself. It was mm -hmm. because I didn't have confidence. I didn't have security. Why didn't I have confidence and security? It's because I did not take care of my fucking self, whether it be mentally, spiritually, emotionally, relationshipally, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck. When I'm not, when I'm not in, taking care of my cul-de-sac, I start looking at other fucking people's streets, start trying to make sure other people take care of, why aren't you doing this? I'm going to save the world. Bitch, you have fucking, mm -hmm. you have dishes in your sink that you haven't washed. What yeah. are you taking care of? You know what I mean? And so <clears throat> all along the line, has it been any, has it, there been any like uh, meditation? Like I meditate every I day. I meditate. What? So I meditate a little bit. My ADHD sometimes makes it like torture to do that. I try mm -hmm. when I, so when I do, but for before major events, if uh, I know I'm going to have a long day at work and you know what we do, it's, it can be a long day. Um, I do uh, words of affirmation. I go to therapy once a week. That's like been, that's everybody. Everybody yeah. deserves therapy. Everybody. Right. Y'all motherfuckers are traumatized. I can goddamn guarantee it, all of you. And you don't realize how much that trauma is affecting the, your personal view of yourself and how you, you're, you're treating others, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I live in Miami, so I, I believe in giving yourself permission uh, to not care all the time, mm -hmm. right? Be a decent human being, but like, I deserve to go get fucked up for three or four days straight. And if I, because I like doing that and I like having fun with my friends and I, I need to not be tuned in and plugged in all the time. Cause I, I'm, I'm, I become like, when I start getting in my mode, I'll go three, four months straight, just working not 10 hours a day, not stop. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy, right? It's just not healthy. You have to unplug to remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing and why you love what you love to do. Right. Um, and t t what, specifically what we do, why you fight the fight that you fight in the way that you choose to fight it. Um, I would say that that's one of the things that Better Discourse where I met Mike, one of the reasons that me and Mike and Jack, well, bro, we literally, if you, 
the day before we I had my panel and I was against th three conservatives, well, two conservatives, one libertarian. Uh, Mike is kind of like his in between thing, and like we were all getting fucked. I mean, fucked up together the night before. And if you would have went saw the panels, a kind of like Democrats known. and Republican uh, politicians, by the way. Oh, we're gonna fight, and we're gonna fight. Uh, oh, I can't believe I'm gonna rip this, and then you're all going to the same fucking bar afterwards. Yeah, like, anyway, but except continue. for our interactions were genuine. Our stances right. are because we believe in them. Right. And it was funny because me and Lisa were like, oh, she was like. Well, we keep trying to find things to disagree on, guys, and we don't really. I'm like, I'm trying. She's, I'm literally coming up with stuff off the top of my head to be mad about, and it's not. Right. And then, like me, we get up and like we hug each other because we're like, yeah, actually, we're really close. Like we fuck with each other really hard. We're probably gonna go to right. Vegas next month together, all of us. Because nice. because we're because we don't hate each other. We don't. We did not. We disagreed, and when we disagreed, we disagreed, and and they listened, and I listened. We agreed where we did. We didn't where we did, but we were respectful. And more importantly, before that, we were friends. We're not gonna let that conversation dissolve that friendship because mm -hmm. the friendship was not based in politics it was based in who we were and not judging that where we are because we're all at our own places and that uh and we're still really good friends to this day she checks in on me and i check in on her we're really excited we're going back in in november and i'm excited to see mike again um and i, I mean i know mike has gone through his own personal evolution and you know that's there's a lot that comes with that while being a gay male like that's it, it is what it is like that's a you going from liberal where you're at least on the service level, accepted as a gay guy, but then going to conservatives where you have to always kind of be aware that there are going to be people who are judging you, even if they don't say it out loud because of the, the circumstance, right? They may not be as inclusive in their spaces when they're not in front of you. And that's something that Mike has to deal with. And we've talked about it and he's talked about it openly. And that evolution is something that I can relate to being a black guy in a liberal space where they pretend like they give a fuck about me too. Right. But I know that, uh, you know, I know everything I know about Joe Biden and Bill Clinton and all these people. So, right. When in general, it's like always, like I say that uh, from South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. Operation Get Behind the Darkies. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Operation Get Behind, get the, behind darkies. the Darkies. That's literally what we just saw in 2020. That's fucking 100%. <laughs> that right. was the 2020 election. Yes. Get Behind the Darkies. Right. And yet he's still, I mean, that's a whole different conversation. But yeah. It's, I'm just very thankful that, uh, I've, I'm in a good place spiritually, mentally, uh, and I have the security to be able to befriend people that I may disagree with on, you know, once politics is its own separate thing, bro. Like, it, right. it, I, don't get me wrong. I'll do what I do in politics because of I care about people, but like, I care about people first. That's the first, second and third concern for me. And I can't, like, I can't separate people from the politics in a sense of like, I can't say I care about people and I know the politics have affected people. So if I, if I'm going to change hearts and minds or bring people onto my side, I have to talk to the people and mm -hmm. accept them as humans. There are right. flaws that come with that. And I'm flaw, I'm a flawed human being also. Right. And that I have to have that understanding and understand that we're limited by our experiences. And until we have new experiences, you can't evolve and you can't have those new experiences until you want to talk to people. Right. For those uh, uh, worried about that, don't worry. The passion and importance of what you believe does not dissipate when you take care of yourself. Now, Have sex. thank you. Exactly. Thank you again, Nico, for coming on. Please, please, uh, please plug your stuff. So uh, once again, on Twitter, at Nico CSFB, it's uh, right there. And then uh, YouTube, Nico House or MCSC Network um, and Rockfin, R-O-K-F-I-N dot com slash Nico N-I-K-O. And uh, let me, see. Uh, I'm on Locals too, same name and Facebook and Instagram, totally different. Jimmy, J-I-M-M-Y, Hen, H-E-N, Drip, D-R-I-P. Once again, my name isn't Jimmy at all. It's just a play on Jimi Hendrix because of the way I dress and my brother always said, I'm Drip God, Jimi Hendrix. And this is, it's, it's funny because I actually don't drink Hennessy. That's what makes it even funnier. That's, that right. was the irony of it. I don't drink Hennessy. Cause like that's where it came from, Jimmy Hen Drip, right? Like, All black not, guys. I, I have a a, a fucking a, a full on uh, problematic black guy from uh, who's a friend of mine from Queens. He has like every time he comes on my fucking show, he's got a different goddamn nickname. I don't understand. I get it, but it's just like oh, and now I'm this, and now I'm that. I'm like all right, but Brandon, goddamn it, Brandon. <laughs> no, literally, no one can. No one ever finds my Instagram because that's my name. Yeah. And like that's my for the longest time it's just been personal shit. Right. Um, but I don't, yeah, I didn't get, I didn't even give myself that, that nickname it was my brother. My brother gives me all the nicknames, my brother, my best friend. Cause I was just like, it's, it's, it's endearing. You know, his brothers mm -hmm. are like, he yeah. said he loves Hennessy. 
right? And he liked the way I dress. So that's what he's like, oh, bro, you go. Hendrick, I love Hennessy and I love the way you dress, bro. And it's right. dope. And I was like, that's stupid. I'm about to change that shit to my Instagram name to be funny. And everybody's like, yo, that name is fucking amazing. I love that. Right. I was like, well, shit. Right. Go ahead and keep it then. <laughs> right. Um, Make sure everybody you subscribe wherever you're listening. Make sure you leave a review, rate it. Go to peterfeliciano.com to buy this shirt. It's okay if we disagree on politics. Uh, and I've got new uh, shirts coming out, I uh, believe, mid-August. I've got music coming out next those. month. I've got, uh, 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 and not only in music, but also my 200th episode is coming up soon. And I'm going to do a lot, big old live stream event and keep an eye out for a new show with... <gasps> Mike Harlow. Uh, so Ooh. everybody make sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. And again, Nico, thank you again for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Absolutely. I'll end the broadcast.